Hi. Now, this is the third tutorial in my series on solving modular equations, where I've shown you how to do different methods, how, depending on the equation that you get, it determines what type of methods are available for you. And for any modular equation, I've shown you that you can always do it by a graphical method. But with something like this, where you've got a mod on both sides, you've also got another method that's open to you because these are both positive quantities and because they're both positive quantities having the modulus sign around them you can also opt for a squaring method and in this tutorial what I'd like to do is show you both the graphical and the squaring method I'd also like to point out that if you got this equation, the mod of 3x plus 9 equaling the mod of 2x plus 1, you might actually see it represented in a different way. Because inside here you've got a common factor of 3, you might find that you get 3 put outside the uh, modulus sign, something like this, 3 mod x plus 3. Okay, it's exactly the same as that. Okay, not going to affect it at all. So, if you get this style of equation, as long as both sides are positive, you can do a squaring method, but you could always do the graphical method. Well, let's get on with the graphical method then. So, you draw your axes, and we first of all start by drawing the graph of y equals the mod of 3x plus 9. Now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with drawing mod graphs. If not, just go on my website, look under the tutorial index and look in mod graphs and you should find something there. Okay, well, y equals the mod of 3x plus 9. We start by thinking of what the line 3x plus 9 would look like. Well, it would be a line with a gradient of 3 and it would intersect the y-axis at 9. So it would be something coming down like this. Okay, so if we draw that line in, Got that. We we'll carry on underneath the x-axis, but remember that part gets mirrored up like that. Now we know the graph crosses the y-axis when x is 0, and that comes out to 9, so we've got 9 there. Where does it cross the x-axis? Well, that's when y is 0, and when y is 0, 3x plus 9 would equal 0. That would mean x would be minus 3. So that in there okay minus 3 now we've got to look at the graph of y equals the mod of 2x plus 1 and if we're doing that what does y equal 2x plus 1 look like well that's going to be a straight line graph gradient 2 crossing the y-axis at 1 so let's probably look something like this and carry on down but remember it gets reflected in the x-axis and we get something like that. So this will be the graph of y equals the mod of 2x plus 1. Let's put in where they cross the y-axis and x-axis. Crosses the y-axis then when x is naught, that's at 1. And crosses the x-axis when y is naught, so that be at x is minus a half. Now where are we going to find the solutions then to our equation? Well it's going to be where the two graphs cross. That's there and there. And we'll call this one A and we'll call this point here B. So we're looking for the x values at where they cross. We could project down onto the x-axis there and there and these particular values here and here would be the values of x that we're interested in. So let's start by working out what the x coordinate is at a. Well that would be the solution to where this line intersects this line. So what is the equation of this line? Well we know the equation of this line would have been y equals 3x plus 9 but this is the negative of that value, the negative of all of 3x plus 9. That gives us minus 3x minus 9, so you'd be a line with a gradient of minus 3x crossing the y-axis at minus 9. 
Now it's got to equal this line. Well, we know that this line would be y equals 2x plus 1, but we've got minus 2x minus 1, the negative of all of that, negative of 2x plus 1, which is going to come out as minus 2x minus 1, a line with a gradient of minus 2, crossing the y-axis at minus 1. So if we expand these brackets, multiply them out by that negative 1 in front, we get minus 3x minus 9 equals minus 2x minus 1. And if we rearrange this by, say, adding 3x to both sides and adding 1 to both sides, we'll end up with x equals minus 8. OK? And that is this value here, minus 8. What about the coordinates of B now? Let's see if we can find those at B. We've got this line now intersecting this line. Now the equation of this line would have been the positive value of this, 3x plus 9. So we've got 3x plus 9 equals, and this line down here was the minus all of 2x plus 1. So that when expanded, this was minus 2x minus 1. OK? So we'll expand that anyway now, and we'll get 3x plus 9 equals minus 2x minus 1. And to solve this, all I need to do is add 2x to both sides and take 9 from both sides. So I'm going to get 5x equals minus 1 minus 9, that's minus 10. And if I divide both sides by 5, I get x equals minus 2. So the solutions then are going to be x equals minus 8 and x equals minus 2. And you can see that they work. Let's just check them out. Look, when x is minus 8, 3 times minus 8 is going to be minus 24, plus another 9 is going to be minus 15. And minus 15, if you mod it, is going to be plus 15. And hopefully we get plus 15 out of this one. 2 times minus 8 is minus 16, add 1 is minus 15. Mod it, you get 15. I'll leave you to check out the minus 2. But basically, there are answers, OK, at the intersections of these two graphs. Now, I did say that we could do this by a squaring method. We can only do this because these two quantities are positive. So, if we square both these, what we're going to have is 3x plus 9 all squared is going to equal 2x plus 1 all squared. So if you expand this in the usual way, you're going to get 9x squared plus 54x, and then 9 squared is going to be 81. And that's going to equal 2x all squared, that's 4x squared. Double the product here, 2x times 1 is 2x, so double that and you get 4x. And then 1 squared is 1. So we've got a quadratic equation. So we need to rearrange this, bring all terms to one side, make it equal to 0. So if you do that, take 4x squared from both sides, you've got 9x squared, take 4x squared, that's 5x squared. 54x, take the 4x from both sides, that brings you down to 50x. And then take 1 from both sides, and that's going to leave you with plus 80. And that equals 0. And you'll notice in this quadratic equation, you could divide each term through by 5. And if you did that, you're going to end up with x squared plus 10x plus 16 equals 0. Now we can factorise this. I'm running out of room, so we'll just work out over here. So you get two brackets, and in these brackets, you'll have x plus 8 and x plus 2. So each of these factors can be equal to 0, and so if you've got x plus 8 equals 0, that leads to x equaling minus 8, and if x plus 2 equals 0, that leads to x equaling minus 2. So again, 
you have your two answers and there are values of x that satisfy this equation. Well, you can decide which method you prefer. But remember the squaring method is only possible when your quantities on either side of the equals are positive values. You couldn't do that if, say, this was just 2x plus 1 without the mod here. So you've got the graphical method which will work all the time. Well I hope that's given you some idea of how you can solve this type of mod equation and I hope also that my other videos have also shown you the differences that you can get and the methods that you're that you can use that are available to you to use when solving these. A tricky idea so take care.